policy 2020 intended for all academicians and students conducted by the internal quality assurance cell of MBITS. The government unveiled the new national education policy, bringing a number of reforms. NEP 2020 aims to provide infrastructure support, innovative education centers to bring back dropouts into the mainstream besides tracking of students and their learning levels, facilitating multiple pathways to learning involving both formal and non-formal education modes. Let's start the session with a silent prayer. Thank you. Dr. P. Sojanlal is the principal of Mar Bestelios Institute of Technology and Science, Kodamangalam, Kochi. Sir has more than 30 years of blended experiences with major international petroleum companies in Middle East and premier educational institutions in India. He has more than 70 publications and guided four PhD aspirants. He also co authored six textbooks. He has many international awards and recognition, and the recent one is Best Principal Award 2021, given by Center for Education Growth and Research, New Delhi. Let me take this opportunity to welcome our beloved principal, Dr. P. Sojanlal, into this webinar, and also request you to deliver the welcome speech. Sir, over to you. Thank you, Thomas. A very good afternoon to all of you. And uh, respected chief guest, Professor Gobal Mukreya, Keynote speaker, Dr. Sunny Vriyago, sir. Our uh, IQSC coordinator, Dr. Soli George, Ms. Sauni May Marcos, and my dear respected faculty members, all the participants over here. Once again, a very good evening to all of you. We are extremely glad on today we are able to organize this program an insight into national education policy 2020 for all academicians and students. And today we have such an eminent personality, Dr. Gobban Mugreya, who is the director of NIT Calicut is with us wow. to give his inaugural address along with his wisdom of speech. I, sir, I welcome you to this national webinar, sir. I'm from NIT Goa, not Calicut. And now I would like to welcome our keynotes. Oh, NIT Goa, sir. So, okay. NIT Goa, director of NIT Goa. Sorry, sir. And now I'd like to welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. Sunny Guriakos, our chief administrator and dean of Research MBITS Kerala and for this national webinar. And now I request all our participants over here to this wonderful program. And indeed, it is a great pleasure and privilege for MBITS to host this seminar. And again, since last year, beginning of the COVID-19, we have been conducting a series of webinars and it's already been more than 13,000 participants are being attended from more than 1,800 institutions in India and abroad. And this is another venture for us to bring this knowledge across so that the whole country, the national education policy will understand what is the content and how the particularly higher education systems are working on. That is where we will be able to concentrate on. So I will not take much time on this. With all these uh, exemptions and uh, policies, and the webinars which you have conducted and the digital platform presence the, we have been awarded the new education award 2021 as well as on 25th of this month edu future excellence award is also going to be awarded for mbits with these few bits i request our moderator to welcome our chief guest for his inaugural letters thank you thank you Sojin, sir dr gobal mugeria director nit goa obtained his B.Tech and M.Tech in chemical engineering from NIT Suratkal and his PhD from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Further, he obtained his postdoctoral degree from the University of California, Riverside, USA. He served at NIT K. Suratkal for 25 years as a professor and dean. Professor Mukheria has guided 10 PhD theses and guided 187 M.Tech theses. He also published 112 international journals in the area of chemical engineering. 
He has a privilege of serving as visiting professor at Asian Institute of Technology, Bangkok, Monash University, Australia, and CPSC Manila. He also served as an advisor to ASCT and Chairman Technical Advisory Committee of Pollution Control Board of Karnataka. He served as the director of NIT Agartala for four and a half years and also director additional charge of NIT Misoram. Presently, he is serving as a director of NIT Goa since August 2017. Dr. Gopal Mugheria has a special privilege as one of the technical experts accompanying President of India during his official tour to China in the last May 2016. He had also privileged to attend the BRICS conference 2018 at Moscow. Presently, he is in a major task of building the new campus of NIT Goa at Kankolim, South Goa. We are extremely privileged, privileged to get you as our chief guest for the session, and I request you to formally inaugurate the session and deliver the inaugural address. Sir, over to you. Namaskar. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, a respected principal of the institution, Dr. P. Sajin Lalji, coordinator of the program, Dr. Soli George, co coordinator, Dr. Somia, the keynote speaker, Professor Koryo Kos, faculty, staff, students, delegates, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls. At the outset, uh, let me thank the organizers uh, for inviting me and also choosing a off topic which has a relevance to the the education system. Friends, uh, I'm not going to touch upon the detailed presentation of the NEP, which is have been formed, because I'm told uh, Dr. Korea Kos is going to make an extensive presentation of an hour on what is there inside the NEP 2020. I'll be uh, mentioning a few of the teaching learning process, its relevance to the NEP, in my experience for the last 36 years as a teacher. I joined this profession uh, by choice, not by default. I'm very happy about it because I always tell uh, my colleagues, teaching is the only profession which creates other professionals. So we are very proud to be a teacher first. Friends, uh, if you go for the education, the definition of education, education is not pumping up the information to the brain of the child. It's a constant and consistent and systematic process of training the mind to think. If a teacher does it properly, it's fine. But unfortunately, nowadays, the, the teachers are more bothered about collecting so many information and directly pumping into the students without identifying whether they can digest. So the education has to be redefined as it is a constant effort to make the child to think. Second thing is, there's a paradigm shift in the teaching learning process for the last 10 years. I always tell as a teacher that in any occasions I tell this, an institution cannot be built by bricks or contractors. If a, a owner of the institution says that I've got an air-conditioned auditorium, air-conditioned classroom, air-conditioned library, air-conditioned computer room, that is not the definition of an institution. A, a good institution institution where it has to be built by people. People, I mean, good principal, good faculty, good students, good teaching learning process, and good teacher taught relation. Today, the great IITs are great because of, not because of buildings, because of the quality of teacher, the quality of students, the quality of curriculum, the quality of the teaching learning process, and the quality of the peer interactions. So an institution, if it is defined by the ex an excellent, it has to be an excellence, it has to anchor all this. As I mentioned, there is a paradigm shift in the teaching learning process. That's why the half life of a teacher is only four years. Every four years, the teacher has to update his knowledge. Let me cite some of the changes what we see. Apparently, the teaching from the faculty centric has changed to student centric. Am I audible? It's okay? Yes, sir. You're audible, sir. Yes, sir. Audible. That the teaching has changed from faculty-centric to student-centric. The teaching has changed from information-based to knowledge-based. It was finished information. Previously, the student has to answer the question. Now, they have to question the answer. Previously, it's a closed book examination. Now, it's an open, open book examination. Previously, the end-term evaluation of the student. 
Now is the continuous evaluation of the students. Previously, a teacher has to prepare a student for a job. Now the teacher has to prepare a student for his profession. The last one is teacher previously bothered about the core competence. Now he has to bother about the interdisciplinary competence. This is exactly. So there's a constant revolution of in education system for the last 10 years. Now NEP has to address this. Now the next question comes, I'll ask the question is, why should the student go for a graduation or a master degree or a doctorate degree? There are five questions with them. First, to pass the examination. They study because they have to pass the examination, get a BE or BTEC or MTEC or PhD. Second thing is, they want to acquire knowledge. The third thing is, they want to enjoy the success after the degree. Next is, they want to get a recognition. The last one is, they have to find an impact on the society. So the institution has to address all these things in the overall development of institution, all of the student. So when an institution focuses on this, there will be an overall development on the total personality of a student. Friends, as you know, when a baby enters a LKG, 90% of the kids have a different opinion about the education. But unfortunately, when they come to the 12th standard, 90% of the kids have only one ambition, that to crack IIT, crack NIT, or go to a BMB base. Because we have made them to think in only one direction. I think it's a fact. There's a reason in Upan and Subhashit, they say, Savidhyaya Vimuktaye. In fact, there is a logo of NIT Goa. Savidhyaya Vimuktaye. That means that the education should help to bring out the clutches of the problems of the world. The students should be trained. But sadly, does our present education address this? Is a question mark. But we have to think in that direction. We always talk about the center of excellence. Friends, I inaugurated five to six center of excellence. But nobody talks about center of relevance. I always say center of excellence should not be created. It's an offshoot of the maturity of department. Suppose tomorrow a, me a me mechanical department opens a center of excellence. It should not be like that. It should be because when a mechanical department gets mature, the excellence is the offshoot of the process. But the relevance is important. I have not seen any institution in the world, in, in India, which says we have a center of relevance. Yesterday, in fact, I inaugurated one of the program called Toy Hockathon. Toy Hockathon called Toy Hockathon. You know, where the toy making, I was surprised to know that 80% of the toys in India are imported. And you know what is the market? They say it's 7.5 lakh crores of imported toys from various countries we get it. Now, if an India acts on that, we ready made, we'll get about 7 lakh crores of, you know, save that, uh, what's called as uh, the foreign currency. This because our students uh, uh, are, are not trained for that. The other important point, friends, I know that 60% of the population of India today are in the age group of 20 to 35. The skill is very, very important. Our education system does not address the skill. It talks about the competence. It does talk about, not about the skill. That's why in a vague language I say, you skill your youth, otherwise you'll be killing your youth. We have to always kill our youth. <clears throat> One more important point in the education system. I'm not commenting on the education system. I'm very proud to be, in fact, I did my postdoc from US. I came back to India. I'm very proud to be a, 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 an Indian as an educator. Now you'll find professor, uh, you'll, in India has a lot of uh, commanders in education, but we have less soldiers. See, suppose a boy wants to go for a B or B.Tech program. He has got so many IITs, so many NITs, so many VITs. But tell me, there are 10 diploma institutions in India, which they can say we are best in India. If a boy wants to go for the best diploma course, there is no opening. So it's high time that an our country should have at least 10 diploma institutions in, 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 in each state so that the students will join by choice, not by default. The second thing is the concept of virtual lab is missing in our teaching learning process. 
we should have a virtual lab facilities so that students can interact the next point which i want to say that the students are not made to think to solve the real problem solution of the society we have an ongoing problems in the society for example disease prevention national security job creation food production quality of life sustainable development these are the hard core problems faced by society but does our higher education system address this now we should have a focus on that now the society is heterogeneous okay now they say appetite of a horse is different from appetite of the elephant so we should see the different student for different uh, protocol and try to help them in that format now in the teaching learning process let me come back to that there are three stages one is called as knowledge assimilation second is knowledge dissemination the third is called knowledge generation that knowledge generation is completely silent in our system it has to be uh, done and if you go to the so called coaching classes the students are trained coaching classes they say that how fast you assimilate and then how fast you omit without digestion because our system of marking depends upon how fast they grab how fast they omit and how fast they get the marks now this has to change that now that this way the open book system has come that people love all the data how to synthesize now the job of a teacher previously was to impart the information now the job of a teacher is to the students had more, has got more information now the job of a teacher to convert that information into knowledge and knowledge into money then only the, the system becomes uh, uh, very very uh, effective friends let me uh, 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 talk few words about the any which is already there in the system as you know uh, for last 34 years india uh, didn't have this nep uh, the after 34 years india revamped its education policy it's a really great uh, uh, i should congratulate the government and cabinet for the last july they implemented this nep and i'm very sure within two years it's going to be a, a, a drastic change in the system now initially they say they replaced 10 plus 2 by 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 that means there is always a active based learning experimental learning is there and critical thinking is there see the child till the age of 8 they have a very active brain and whatever the good or bad you impose or uh, uh, try to inculcate with them that will have permanent marking on that so the primary education is very important so in the new nep they have given more importance to the the primary education also and uh, they have given equal importance to vocational education and also the skill based learning which is a very welcome i think professor parikos will um, describe this in detail i don't touch upon that coming to the higher education all the graduating system graduation courses will have one minor and one major for example a, a person who a, a student who wants to get a, a degree in physics can have uh, uh, can science can have a major in physics and a minor in music why not it can be uh, his interest or it could be because of his uh, reluctance and all the uh, the education system are governed by one authority so there will be common education standard this one is a welcome part of nep uh, which is envisaged and all universities all government colleges private colleges open gym university will be in the same grading system so there will be always a uniformity uh, which is one of the welcome uh, uh, activity of nep there will be always a choice based grade system shall be brought in in the nep that means the students will have uh, can learn a mechanical engineering student can have a more course on computer science which can be used for they getting a job also and a core competence with a more emphasis on practical knowledge is very important as students can come and have more practical knowledge there will be different layers as mentioned in nep first year if he completes and discontinues he get certificates second year he get uh, with a diploma and if he completes all the courses he get a degree it's very good why not and they can have a, a, a staggered uh, learning process also 
the next one point which I, I was very much impressed was involvement of foreign universities. There's a process in this NEP invites a foreign university. It's a good uh, uh, exposure so that our students uh, with a less expenditure can have a degree which is affiliated to the foreign university. And also we can uh, invite some of the foreign experts uh, to our education system, which is a welcome move. And uh, there'll be multidisciplinary thinking also. For example, the educators, the students, institutions, so that there'll be employability will be increased for each of these process. And the next important is autonomy is a must. But autonomy can be the, uh, the two sides like a knife. It can be useful or it can be misused. But definitely the autonomy, academic autonomy, financial autonomy, and administrative autonomy are very important for an education institution. I was an advisor in AACT. We emphasized, and uh, it should be always seen that, see, uh, AACT has uh, made a very uh, 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 good system that uh, uh, self-disclosure system. That means an institution should disclose all their credentials in the, the public domain. So the parents will know what exactly happening. The parents are the best accreditors. Suppose if I'm admitting my son or daughter to the institution, I should have all information about what is there in the institution, legally in the, so it's called self-disclosure system. But the effect is very good. It's called self-disclosure. It will be self-closure of the institution. If the college is not doing well, the parents will know that this college is bad and no student will join. There will be an automatic self-closure of institutions. It's a very good system, self-disclosure of the credential of the institution. So that the top performing institutions will do very well. And if the institution is not performing well, parents know that they are not doing well, they will not admit naturally, there will be natural death of the institutions. So that there will be no compromise on the quality of education. Because if you give a bad education, you are not only spoiling a student, you are spoiling the generation of the student. So you should be very careful in that. I'm very sure uh, Professor Koryakos will address all these points in the NAP system when he talk about this. And uh, the last point, which is very welcome in the NAP was uh, to impart the education in the local language. Because uh, it will be difficult, I'm very sure, two years will be very difficult. But the student will be very friendly. See, I've seen in NIT system, some of the students, they come from Orissa and Gujarat. They have studied up to 12th standard in Gujarati or Orissa medium. And they'll find a lot of problem in understanding English. And uh, that becomes a handicap later. So uh, the, uh, the educating the, uh, the child or uh, student in the uh, local language is one of the welcome move. And these are the points which I want to mention. I thought uh, our professor uh, Parikos will, uh, will explain this night in, the, in his uh, uh, presentations. But in addition to that, there should be a technology intervention to increase the accessibility to the disabled person, like Divyanga group. We have to have uh, increase in access to Divyanga group and uh, uh, e-content in regional languages. We'll have to create an e-language, e-content in the real languages. More of virtual lab has to be created. We have to have a digitally equipped teaching learning system because uh, see all of us are now because of the COVID, uh, the COVID has made us uh, disconnected socially, economically, and emotionally, okay? Uh, but socially and uh, physically, we can be disconnected. But why should we emotionally disconnected? In fact, we should be more emotionally connected among the students, among the faculty. Okay. And uh, I'm very sure we'll be come out of this COVID because this is not a, 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 a end of the world. I'm very sure we should be prepared. We should be sanguine so that at the end of the day, uh, we'll be uh, getting the best out of the uh, system. To end my talk. Uh, I'm very bit philosophical, pardon me. Um, these are the two points which I always tell in my speech, uh, which is very from my heart because I learned my education to the Gurukala system. They say that a teacher should respect the child first. It's not the other way. That's why in, in, our, in our system, they say, Shunvanto Vishwa Amrathasya Putra. That means every child is born with a spark. It's the duty of a teacher to find out what is a spark is and try to encourage him 
to get best out of it but unfortunately our teachers we do the other way they'll try to find a fault with the student and more make you more depressed there's a very important in the teaching learning process the next one is that they say what the student has to be let's told in the upanishad they say kaka chestu bako dhyanam shwana nidra tatayo cha alpahari graha tyagi iti vidyarthi lakshanam they say a student should be alert like a crow kaka chestu is be alert like a crow bako dhyanam he should have a concentration of a swan and he should sleep like a dog that means with a, with a, a small disturbances to get up and he should eat less and should not bother about the family these are the five things very important for a student because in a teaching learning process it's always said that only one fourth of his knowledge a student get from the teacher one fourth he gets from because of his merit one fourth he gets from his friend and the last one fourth he gets from the life of the dalla life so with these few words i should once again congratulate uh, the institute the principal for uh, selecting the very nice topic of nep i'm very sure uh, it's not only we are narrating the uh, the, uh, the what is there in nep we should try to implement in our system so that uh, uh, it becomes a robust system i'm very sure i always tell running an institution like planting a coconut tree if you take care of institution for 10 years like a coconut tree it will be there for 50 years if you take care of a, uh, your institution like a banana tree it will be there for one year next year you have to replace so i am very sure the institution will take all the positive point of nep and try to implement in your system and be a role model for other institutions so that at the end of the day uh, institution our in country will be very proud of as a education hub of the world i am always dreaming for a day where the western world parents will send their children to india for higher studies it will happen within 10 years so thank you very much with the few words i once again thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to be a part of this great function i am indeed honored namaskar vandya matra namaskar sir and it's really an amazing talk you have touched upon so many aspect which uh, of which uh, the center of relevance everybody is running after center of excellence and the word which you precisely said center of relevance is a uh, very much thought provoking uh, and uh, it's really a very nice concept and i'm sure that uh, uh, everyone should be looking forward and the next one which you mentioned uh, the highlights like 7.0 lakhs crores of india is importing the toys these are all small ones why not we have our own indian market for this that's a great opportunity and also we have in engineering as well as uh, science as well as in major minor and major concept which i am sure that most of the audience are familiar also that can also uh, have in a dynamic uh, systematic way so that our next generation will be so much benefited as you rightly mentioned our younger uh, indian population is 60 more than 60 percentage is within the younger group and definitely will be able to move forward and also the prime stakeholder of any institute is our own students which is uh, whether we call it in management types or whether you call it in the ancient gurugula times the prime stakeholder of any institute is the, our students so it should be student centric not the faculty centric or any other centric so as also you mentioned that having a building is possible by the management but uh, building like a banana tree is the most important things and again it will stay for 100 years 150 years with its uh, strength and and uh, nourishing and it's not like a banana tree i wish that all the participants over here will have an opportunity to cultivate their own language their own buildings their own converting everything into as a very strong uh, coconut tree and also you have given the particular attention for the disabled category of that's really very much sir encouraging and i am sure that that is also very much appreciable and also in the new digital paradigm the digital learning systems the virtual labs where i am sure that along with other iits nits and the major institutions we are still Uh, slightly immature into this but uh, we will be looking forward to have our own expertise in the virtual lab system and we are also doing that 
and sir it was uh, very much uh, encouraging thought provoking and uh, thank you very much sir it's really nice and uh, we'll over to the next uh, keynote speaker and we'll take the questions after the keynote address thank you sir thank you very much thank you very much sir dr sunny kriyakos did his bsc degree in mathematics at union christian college alway in 1979 and msc degree in mathematics at cochin university of science and technology in 1981 He joined the Department of Mathematics, Union Christian College, as a junior lecturer on 1981. He obtained his PhD from Cochin University of Science and Technology in 1995. He was promoted as reader in mathematics in 1995 and became an approved research guide in mathematics of the MG University in 1999. He was appointed as the principal of Basilios Paulos II Catholicos College, Piravam, an aided college affiliated to Mahatma Gandhi University, on January 28, 2010. During his tenure as principal, the college got A grade in NAC accreditation. He was elected to the Senate of Mahatma Gandhi University with a massive mandate. He also served as a member of the Board of Studies of PG UG Mathematics programs in Mahatma Gandhi and Kerala universities. He contributed immensely to the introduction of choice-based credit and semester system in MG and Kerala universities. He served as a member in the panel of experts in mathematics. for the appointment of teachers in mahatma gandhi university his contribution in forming the syllabi for undergraduate and postgraduate degree programs in mahatma gandhi and kerala universities has been well appreciated dr sunny guria co supervised 16 phd's in mathematics under mahatma gandhi university kottayam he has the rare distinction of successfully supervising the first phd in mathematics from a research center in an affiliated college in kerala he has published more than 70 research papers in various national and international journals His research interest includes fuzzy logic, graph theory, decision theory, etc. Dr. Sunny has already delivered more than 200 invited lectures at various national and international seminars and conferences in India and abroad. He authored two books and edited a number of volumes. Dr. Sunny Kuriyakos is an active member of the Kerala Mathematical Association. He served the association as its general secretary for eight years and now serves as the academic secretary of the association. He is qualified. He is a qualified Kerala State Basketball referee too. He is presently in the position of Chief Administrator and Dean Research at our Institute Embits, and I request you to kindly deliver the keynote address, sir. Over to you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you see the screen? Yes. Yes. Sir. Screen is visible. Please go ahead, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Respected Principal Dr. Sajil Lal, the IQAC Coordinator Dr. Soli George, Joint Coordinator Dr. Saumya. Mr. Thomas, Mr. Eldos, other office bearers of the IQAC, our distinguished speaker, guest of honor today, Dr. Gobal Ugeria, the director of uh, NIT Goa, other delegates, participants from. our own college and from elsewhere i am very happy to present before you a very short session on an insight into national education policy 2020 dear friends before i get into the real presentation let us examine the background of uh, the the nep 2020 as we all know as indians we are all proud to say that india possesses a, a very famous education in the ancient days the gurugula system of education the world famous takshashila nalanda universities and all so we are all having the rich heritage of education in our culture but slowly 
years past, centuries past, and now we reach at a stage where there are umpteen number of higher education institutions and schools in India. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there are more than 1,000 universities in our country. There are around 45,000 colleges in India. And of course, 1,500 plus standalone institutions are there in the educational system. So we, are, we, have, uh, we have grown to a stage that the number of institutions is very high. But if you look at the other side, suppose there is an engineering graduate or a graduate from India, normally graduated from an ordinary college, seldom gets any employment outside India or even inside India. What is the reason for this irony? Now, on one side, we are giving a lot of importance to education, mushrooming, mushrooming of education is one side, but at the same time, uh, there is a shortage of uh, quality professionals coming out of the, these institutions. So there will be, this, all these means that there should be some, something wrong somewhere. And uh, uh, so people thought that the educationists thought that there should be some attempt to, to solve this problem and to make our graduates employable all over the world. So they thought of uh, a policy, national educational policy. And as our uh, inaugurating speech, speaker pointed out, the last uh, educational policy came into existence in 1986. And since then, now only we have the third national education policy. Now, another thing I want to share with you. Now, even though there are a number of, a humongous uh, 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 number of uh, educational institutions where we are lacking, what is our shortage? Now, the present uh, educational system has many challenges. Now, in early days, uh, we used to go to the schools and uh, uh, maybe gurugulas and schools. But now, uh, the quality of our institutions has gone down. Similarly, there is a heterogeneous type of uh, institutions prevailing in India. There are some very good institutions. There are some mediocre type of institutions, but some are very, very low in standard. And yearly thousands and lakhs of graduates are coming out of the, these institutions. And uh, so an ordinary, ordinary uh, student cannot afford to go to some good institutions where a lot of money is required for learning there, studying there. And also equity is another challenge that we face and access and accountability. So these are the five challenges that we face today. The modern educational system faces quality, affordability, equity, access, and accountability. And uh, uh, in order to find a solution for all these challenges, our government thought about implementing certain educational policy as a remedy for all these problems. So we'll move on to the uh, presentation with this uh, introduction. Regarding the national education policies, the first policy for education was promulgated in 1968 based on the recommendations of the Kothari Commission. And this policy sought to have a radical restructuring of India's education system, equalizing opportunities for education for all to accomplish national integration, better economic and cultural development. So that was the first uh, educational policy. And it, is, it was in line with the Kothari Commission. Now the second national 
policy on education was implemented in 1986, which called for realizing compulsory education for every child until the age of 14, as mentioned in the Indian Constitution. And the third national education policy, that is the present one, was approved by the Union Cabinet of India on 29 July 2020, which replaces the national policy of education of 1986. So this third national education policy is the first of kind in the 21st century. Now, in uh, regarding the uh, involvement of uh, the, the making of this uh, uh, NEP 2020. In January 2015, a committee under the former Cabinet Secretary T. S. R. Subramanian started the consultation process for a new education policy and submitted a draft policy report in 2017. And after that, in 2019, a panel led by former I. S. R. O. Chief Dr. K. Gasturi Gangan submitted the draft new education policy and was released by the majority for open discussions. i understand that a huge amount of discussion was held on the draft education policy and about uh, more than 2 lakh 2.5 lakhs of discussions and opinions were collected and it was a collaborative effort it was a consultation process and after all these process the ministry undertook a rigorous consultation process in the formulating the draft policy by considering the huge number of responses from various local bodies and educationists finally on july 29 2020 the union cabinet of indian india approved the new education policy nep 2020 so we have the new nep uh, 2020 in our hand and as i understand the policy will be implemented step by step shortly see due to the covid pandemic It, it gets little delay otherwise it would have been implemented uh, last year itself so uh, we why we go through the nep the draft nep contain 40 486 pages whereas the consolidated the published nep 2020 consists of 65 pages and there are four parts given in that part 1 is for school education part 2 is for higher education and part 3 and 4 which is not uh, that very uh, lengthy but uh, uh, the part 3 says other key areas of focus and making it happen so this is the these are the four parts of the nep 2020 now now we'll uh, our uh, our agenda today we'll look at school education in a small scale and we give more importance to the higher education component and probably we will not touch upon the last two parts which are very very small so the main discussion will be on the higher education so before that because it's a continuum as uh, uh, as i read the nep 2020 uh, looked at the entire educational system as a continuum as a continuum so they treat school education and then higher education uh, it is a continuation therefore we should say something about school education we should know something about school, school education then definitely we will move on to the higher education uh, component now you know we all know that the existing academic structure uh, is 10 plus 2 10 years uh, in uh, the one level and higher secondary level in the two years plus two the new academic structure proposed in the nep 2020 has 5 uh, plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 structure that is it has four components first one is foundational component then preparatory component then middle uh, com- component and secondary component now this fund, foundational component is a new thing earlier uh, we admit a student a child at the age of 6 to a school now before that see this is because of a very very serious issue you know why we start the uh, start educating our children from the age of 3 as we all know a child 
a child has uh, uh, a child is getting his uh, neural network ready by the age of 3 and if uh, sufficient input is given to a child at the age of 3 the tender age of 3 the formative age of 3 then definitely that will long last that will that will be uh, help, helping the child to continue his studies in the coming years so catch them young so the main intention of this nep a major uh, aspect of this nep is we are sending our children or the education starts at the age of three and uh, uh, that is uh, anganwadi or preschool or, or balavika ages uh, ages three to six now why this is included there is a rational behind it you know the as per the present practice what we uh, what we really experience now is uh, family or students or children of high elite families they can afford to they usually send their kids their babies to play school or preschools and they will, they will be given some sort of education there whereas the chunk of the population belong to the the lower strata they can't afford to send their kids to the uh, play school or posh play school and preschools so what they do they will send their kids to the anganwadi and what is going on in the anganwadi we all know what is going on in the anganwadi nothing no education is uh, done in the anganwadi anganwadi is uh, uh, misused in many ways conducting meetings and of course they will be uh, they will be looking after the nutrition of the, ch the children and all but no education is important in any anganwadi therefore a majority of the babies or the the, the children uh, in the formative ages spend their time valuable time precious time in the anganwadis 3 to 2 and uh, the whereas some students some children uh, belonging to the higher strata they go to the preschool and and uh, play schools, very posh play school and preschools. And after completing this, uh, either Anganwadi or preschool, they come to the uh, the the uh, class one, class one. And uh, therefore, that itself will create a huge gap between the attitude, between the uh, standard, between the uh, the mentality of those students sitting in the class one. And uh, they won't be able to cope up with the fast learners. So generally, that will push on to three, four, five, and very often they will tend to be dropouts. So that is the reason why we have more than two crore dropouts children. There are in India we have more than two crore dropouts kids. They are dropping out after class five or class six. They won't be able to continue along with the other counterparts in the good schools. So that, that is, there is a huge inequality prevailing in our school system. So in order to uh, overcome this difficulty, in order to, to curtail this anomaly, what NEP envisages is that the government itself, they will design the uh, schools in such a way that all students will be going to uh, uh, the preschools or play schools uh, or Anganwadi, modified Anganwadis at the age of three years. So definitely that's a very good drastic uh, move or drastic uh, aspect of the new NEP. And three years, uh, of course, and four years uh, from class nine to 12, those four years. So at the age of 12, they will definitely complete their uh, secondary education, school education. Now, what is the advantage? The main advantage of this model is that all students, all uh, kids from starting from the age three will definitely reach uh, class 12, class 12 without any drop dropout. So the number of dropouts will be minimized by this type of model in the school system, academic structure.
so that is the uh, new system which is very very uh, uh, admirable now the therefore what uh, what is envisaged in the nep 2020 the early child education learning in the formative years of course what they learn in the formative years will definitely last forever and what a child learns at the age of the tender age of 3 to 5 that will be lasting forever a lasting impression on the child so these uh, these are the various components all these things are very very common and uh, all these things have become a cliche now see all of the these terms are all common in the educational uh, parlance developing curiosity logical thinking problem solving arts crafts and music relationship with nature colors shapes alphabets numbers teamwork collaboration play based discovery play based and discovery based learning ethics self identity etiquette behavior and emotion development all these things will be achieved at the early education early period tender age that's a great advantage uh, uh, listed in the nep next one is the entire pedagogy has been revamped and reinvigorated and modified uh, transformed experiential learning is there as our uh, uh, gobal sir pointed out experiential learning is there uh, focus on experiential inquiry and discovery based teaching and learning methods integrated pedagogy then uh, promotion of peer tutoring equal weightage see uh, all these things another important one that i want to mention at this point is that the higher education is definitely a continuation continuation of the school education right higher education is always a continuation of the school education what the the child does in school will definitely influence his achievements and performance in higher education period therefore we have as of now what we have is uh, uh, curricular activities co curricular activities extra curricular activities all these activities are there but if this nep after this nep is implemented all these three will merge to simply curricular or the the equal weightage will be given to that nowadays uh, curricular non extra curricular and non curricular are not given importance as much of uh, the curricular aspect curricular uh, uh, activities but after nep after the implementation of nep uh, definitely all these three will be equally treated all these three are equally necessary for the growth of a child you know uh, how do we how does a child grow a child grows in different ways right we have uh, that is what the higher education uh, higher education agency is also envisage see our growth is happening in three ways mainly knowledge cognitive uh, the cognitive type of uh, 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 enhancement cognitive domain we have then the skill domain we have then we have the attitude domain okay uh, so we have cognitive domain and knowledge domain and uh, the skill domain or uh, the psychomotor domain and of course the attitude domain and the cognitive domain is uh, done by our head brain and the activity the skill skill domain will be acted according to our hands and legs right and the the attitude comes from the heart so we grow in these three dimensions three in three domains so for a healthy person to be well educated has to grow in these three domains this is what the the uh, the uh, washington accord in the higher education level engineering uh, context in the washington accord they have given different attributes to the, the programs and we are following the williams paddy outcome based education and this outcome based education uh, williams paddy has clearly uh, pointed out or mentioned these three domains of growth so in this uh, uh, nep 2020 even though they have been mentioned the outcome based education i have been seen that the particular term there but they have already they have had this uh, in mind while 
uh, while uh, uh, finalizing this NDP. So uh, there is no hard separation between these two, these three. Freedom of choosing various subject combination and bagless base. The uh, heavy bags is a bane for all our children. So there should be some at least a few days without any bag. They come uh, without any bag and, and enjoy the uh, uh, school. Use integration of technology. All these things are uh, done in the school level. Of course, all these three, all these things will have counterparts in the higher education sector also, right? Uh, so this is uh, another aspect in the school education, universal approach, right? I'm not reading all the uh, slides, simply uh, uh, listing some of the important things. I can't do it in uh, a couple of hours, even in a couple of hours, it is very lengthy, 65 page uh, uh, NAP. So universal approach is there, right? From preschool to secondary education level, NEP has introduced important provisions that ensure universal access to school students that include, see, universal access, there are a lot of uh, methods by which we can access, have the universal access, right? Uh, then, so modern, uh, uh, well, uh, infrastructure and all, state-of-the-art infrastructure facilities, et cetera, et cetera experienced faculty members. So all these things help are mentioned in the NEP 2020 to get a universal uh, flavor for the students. Okay. Maximizing foundation literacy and numeracy. This is also another thing that is uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, the foundational literacy part means the three to six age. The three to six age, the foundational class category should be mo given more importance and numeracy. We all uh, uh, cry about our plight, our present situation. A classic student, a student who is in the classics according to the present system may not be knowing how to read a book in class two. A problem uh, given uh, in the class two uh, syllabus, a mathematical problem given in the class three uh, syllabus cannot be solved by a class seven student. That is a great paradox, no? Uh, so there is something wrong somewhere. So maximizing the foundation literacy. Once the foundational literacy and numeracy is uh, made strong, then definitely that will help uh, the uh, the education of the later days. States will be guided to formulate strategies and implementation plans for achieving universal foundational progress successfully, primary schools by the year 2025. So by 2025, this foundational literacy and numeracy will be getting more and more importance. And steps will be initiated by the government to, to make it uh, happen. The government will also pay attention to preparing a national book promotion policy in the future. Okay. Uh, then this is another aspect, power of language and multilingualism, lingualism, right? See, we all dream in our, our mother tongue, right? So a student till class five can uh, learn things in their mother tongue. The NEP 2020 does not restrict education on in English language only, only in English language. It travels education in mother tongue, regional, local language. Multilingualism is promoted in the uh, NEP 2020. All right. See, the assessment reforms also is given, are given in the NEP, the NEP 2020. NEP 2020 aims to bring in a competency-based assessment that evaluates analytical power, critical thinking, decision-making, creativity, conceptual clarity. See, and examinations will be only in grades three, five, and eight. So, uh, see, while we look at these points, the evaluation and the assessment reforms, the assessment criteria, they have listed as analytical power, critical thinking, decision-making, creativity, conceptual clarity, all these. This will definitely invoke to the Bloom's taxonomy a little bit, right? The highest knowledge level is create, uh, creating, right? So the creativity is tested, then the critical thinking will be tested, 
analysis, analyzing. That is another Bloom's uh, uh, taxonomic knowledge level. So these things will be taken into consideration in the assessment uh, of uh, the performance of students. Board examinations will be conducted for grades 10 and 12, keeping in mind their overall development. The way of uh, assessment uh, will be designed with a more holistic approach. Now, the, the learning by heart and mugging up method of uh, learning, uh, the rote learning method is no more uh, uh, accepted and uh, a holistic uh, way of uh, uh, learning is preferred, holistic approach. A new national assessment center, uh, PARAC, performance assessment review and analysis of knowledge for holistic development will be considered for evaluating students' progress. So unlike in the past, simply what we do in the usual procedure, we give questions and we'll get the answers and the students will learn by heart what is taught and they will simply write down the answers. So that type of uh, uh, assessment pattern is going to be replaced by the novel, the new method uh, with a holistic approach. Okay. Now all these, for all these things, funds are required and uh, uh, government uh, has decided to set up a gender inclusion fund, special education fund. And of course, uh, in the coming slides, we will see that 6% of the GDP will be set apart for education. 6% of the GDP uh, will be set apart for the education. And why the need of, what is the need of special education zone? See, why we look at the, the, the geographical nature of uh, uh, our educational institutions, good institutions, standard institutions, well-known institutions cluster around some, some places. Whereas uh, in the backward, backward places, no educational institution there. Therefore, such a special education zone will be identified and given importance to, given funds to such uh, zones, uh, education zones to, to come up. Okay, so this is, uh, this was the, a brief uh, account of the school education, the part one. Now we move on to the part two, higher education. We, I think uh, all the participant, participants and delegates uh, listening to this, attending this particular program belong to the higher education strata, right? Uh, so we'll be more concerned about higher education and what are the changes that is going to come? What are the advantages of uh, these new reformation, uh, et cetera, et cetera, will be discussed uh, in the coming slides. Okay. Now, before that, you know, uh, higher education, as I mentioned earlier, higher education is not treated as separate entity. Just like, see, the preschool, the preschool is not uh, a continuation, a pre-continuation of the, the class one. It is not the deep progression of class one. It is, of course, it is considered as a single continuum. Similarly, this is a part of uh, in the continuum. So starting from this, the preschool, now the student is at the stage of taking higher education. Now, what are the things? So before we, uh, before we move on to the, the NEP uh, innovations uh, envisaged in the policy, let us uh, see what are the uh, difficulties, what are the problems that we face now in the higher education system. Now, this is not my own findings. It was spelled out by the, uh, the drafting committee itself. They have, found, they have identified these uh, major problems we face currently in the higher education system. Now, severely fragmented higher education system, right? Severely fragmented. Less emphasis on the development of cognitive skills and learning outcomes. Now, uh, just today in the newspaper Kerala, uh, we have, I have read that there are only 38 engineering colleges accredited by the uh, NB accredited. In the NB accredited context, definitely these cognitive skills and learning outcomes, all these things, they say course outcomes and all, all these things will be discussed. But if 
and institutions, the majority of the institutions are not NB accredited or even NAC accredited. So for them, they are these terms are quite unfamiliar. What are the cognitive skills? What are the learning outcomes? So the present education system fails to address these things in detail. Rigid separation of disciplines, right? With early specialization and streaming, streaming of students into narrow areas of study. So interdisciplinary is not at all encouraged in the present time, the present context. Whereas uh, uh, rigid separation of disciplines, the one department will not have any connection to the other department. Mathematics department has uh, nothing to do with the statistics department and like that. So that type of rigid separation of disciplines uh, is a major problem that we face now. Limited access, particularly in socio-economically disadvantaged areas with few higher education institutions that teach in local languages. So this also is a problem that we face now. Uh, this is a disputable, uh, disputable uh, point in the NEP that uh, uh, things should be taught in the local language. English need not be the medium of instruction. Uh, but in the NEP envisages all these teachings could be in long, local language so that the uh, disadvantaged uh, people, socially, economically disadvantaged areas, students uh, coming from that area will be definitely uh, help, will be will be useful. I mean, they will be getting the advantage by this. Then limited teacher and institutional autonomy. Limited teacher and institutional autonomy. Uh, a teacher cannot choose his or her own syllabi or own method even. And the examination system, teaching, learning, and evaluation techniques, he or she cannot choose. There is limited uh, autonomy uh, now. Inadequate mechanisms for merit-based career management and progression of faculty and institutional leaders, right? That is also a way uh, uh, that we face today. If, if a faculty member is doing very well, uh, the present uh, promotion system, the, the, the progression system does not allow him to, to uh, move on a fast track because, because of many, so many other hurdles. So this is a major problem. Then lesser emphasis on research, at most universities and colleges and lack of competitive peer reviewed research funding across disciplines, suboptimal governance and leadership of uh, higher education, and ineffective regulatory system. Uh, all these things are our problems now, right? So many regulatory systems are there. If one, some project is to be sanctioned and approved, lot of, uh, uh, lot of hurdles are to be cleared. Large affiliating universities resulting in low standards of undergraduate student education. Even in our university, KTU, lot of more than nearly 150 uh, uh, engineering colleges are affiliated to one university that is making the university uh, choking. So this is also a problem that we face today. Now, taking into consideration all these problems, they have framed, they have identified this problem. That itself is a, a, a welcome move. So taking all this into consideration, they have developed the NEP 2020 uh, higher education. Now, uh, I'm not going strictly uh, along the, uh, I mean, as per the NEP 2020, I have classified the reforms into different categories and I thought it would be much better. So major reforms, what are the major reforms in the higher education that in NEP envisages? Academic reforms are there, institutional reforms are there, there are uh, suggestions or changes in the governance, then some new additions and changes are there, use of technology, we'll discuss one by one. What is the change in the academic structure? What are the changes that uh, NEP uh, in, uh, um, says? Uh, with regard to the academic structure. Holistic and multidisciplinary education, flexibility of subjects. And that is the most important, admirable aspect of NAB 2020. They are promoting multidisciplinarity in education, flexibility of choosing subjects. What type of multidisciplinary that we are, uh, we are meaning? What type of flexibility that we are uh, appointing? 
these things are very very clearly mentioned in the NDP 2020 that in the policy document, right? Now, what do you mean by multi? See, uh, in the school education system, what any NDP 2020 envisaged, there there was uh, there is flexible enough flexibility there. School clusters are there, and uh, a student, a, a school student can do his or her education in one institution sometime and he or she can move on to another institution to get some credits. So that flexibility is there and curricular, non-curricular, extracurricular, all those things are now merged into one. Therefore, he, the student will get a lot of flexibility in choosing subjects and etc. etc. So coming to the higher education uh, situation, there are more flexibilities. See, the curriculum, there will be flexibility in the curriculum, there will be flexibility in the pedagogy, assessment, and student support for enhanced student enterprises. See, and we'll come, we'll come to that one by one. See, uh, another, uh, another important uh, uh, aspect of the NEP 2020 is the UG program is restructured. The UG program is restructured in the new NEP 2020. Now they have uh, uh, they have given these uh, uh, the four year there are four year degree program instead of uh, the present three year degree program they have proposed four year degree program and suppose a student completes the first year then he or she will get a certificate in that discipline. And uh, suppose he or she completes the first two years, then he will be getting a diploma. And suppose he completes three years in the program, then he will be getting a bachelor's degree in that program. And there is a provision for studying one more year in the multidisciplinary areas. Then he, that degree will be known as multidisciplinary degree. So these are the four types of uh, uh, degree, diploma, bachelor's, and multidisciplinary degree that is in the new NDP. And uh, suppose a student is undergoing this type of uh, UG program. If he comes to the master's level or PhD, there may be two-year master's program with the two second year devoted entirely with the second year devoted entirely to research for those who have completed three year bachelor's program. So for a three year bachelor, three year degree student, he has to do two year for master's as practice now. And a student for, uh, for who has completed four year bachelor program with the research, he will be requiring only one year for master's program. So in order to get a PG, a multidisciplinary degree student has to study only one year. And there may be an integrated five-year bachelor's master's program as well. Now, for PhD program, this is not much different uh, from the, the the practice going on now. Practice now, of course, uh, master's and four-year bachelor's will be there. Uh, they have to undergo some uh, credit-based courses. The uh, these are all now we are the, that we practice now. Okay, now this is another uh, important important aspect of the NDP 2020. See, uh, credit transfer and academic bank of credits (ABC). It is denoted as ABC, academic bank of credits. What is that? What is the uh, what is the purpose of that, and how does it function? ABC would digitally store the academic credits earned from various recognized higher education institutions so that the degrees from the from an HEI can be awarded taking into account credit shared. See, for example, I will tell you with an example. Suppose uh, in MBITS, in MBITS, a student is doing mechanical engineering and uh, he's, uh, he has to undergo, say, for example, 200 credits in order to finish his program. So, the present uh, uh, NEP uh, proposes that that particular student can study, can take, say, for example, 100 credits from one institution 
and next 100 students 100 credits from various institutions even mooc courses are are enough or courses credits from other institutions for example according to his uh, interest maybe a student of engineering can get a can uh, and get a credit from nursing or medicine or biology or uh, psychology so flexibility is there so there will be a academic bank of credits and uh, another uh, aspect here i it will come later but i will tell you now see uh, suppose i study here for one year then i thought no i should discontinue now discontinue and go to some other uh, job then i can come back so multiple entry is also introduced in the nep so this is academic bank of credits okay then research and innovation higher education institutions will focus on research and innovation by setting up startup incubation centers uh, technology development centers centers in frontier areas of research greater industry academic linkages etc and finally nep proposes nep 2020 proposes to teach in vernacular language now this is another important aspect of uh, the uh, very uh, adv very admirable and positive aspect of uh, nep 2020 that is integration of vocational and professional education now as of now we have so many occasional uh, higher secondaries and all occasional courses are there and uh, professional courses are professional education is there and there is uh, uh, hardly any connection between this vocational and uh, professional education but as per the nep 2020 there is a, an integration of vocational and professional education beginning with the occasion i told you that uh, a student from class 6 onwards will have one occasional component in his uh, curriculum. So at the time of passing out, passing 12th class, that student will be knowing one occasion at least. So he, he can make a livelihood using that. So that is the importance of integrating uh, occasional component in the education system. So beginning with occasional exposure at early ages, uh, in middle and secondary school, quality occasional education will be integrated smoothly into higher education. It will ensure that every child learns at least one occasion and is exposed to several more. By 2025, at least 50% of learners through the school and higher education system shall have exposure to occasional education for which a clear action plan with the targets and timelines will be developed. Okay, so occasional education is going to become more and more important. Next point is higher education institutions will offer vocational education either on their own or in partnership with industry and NGOs. So MBITS can offer some vocational uh, courses so that uh, the schools nearby or the colleges nearby can come and take the course and get the credits from here. Uh, okay. Next uh, point is evaluation. Now, in the process of teaching, learning, evaluation, all these belong to the academic structure. See, evaluation, curriculum and pedagogy will be designed institutions and motivated faculty to ensure stimulating and engaging learning experience for students and continuous formative assessment will be used to further the goals of each program. Now, the present practice prevailing in an affiliated college now, the questions are set by the university, but uh, the new educational policy uh, proposes to have autonomous colleges. Uh, the, I, I'll come to that later. Okay. So there, where you have continuous assessment, continuous evaluation, all assessment systems shall also be decided by the colleges. Uh, higher educational institutions shall move to criterion-based grading system. Okay. So in assessment also, there is drastic change going to come. I mean, now academic plan. So why we make an academic plan, then there is a change. There are changes uh, proposed by the NEP 2020. Each institution will integrate its academic plans, ranging from curricular improvement to quality of classroom transaction into its larger institution development plan. There should be an institution development plan to be uploaded in their website. See, uh, and how, the, how these uh, uh, 
the plans, academic plans are integrated uh, with the uh, curricular and the other uh, activities should be uploaded in the institution development plan. Next is each institution will be committed to the holistic development of students and create strong uh, interns, intern system for supporting diverse students groups. Right? What is that? Now, uh, the NEP 2020 proposes to have a well-rounded development of students or holistic development of students. Now, I told you before, the cognitive uh, levels or the knowledge will be uh, enhanced. In the present system, more importance is given to the knowledge, uh, knowledge uh, uh, attained. Whereas, the other two are also important. For a holistic uh, model, what we have to address is cognitive, then uh, the, the skill and attitude. See, you can imagine there are a lot of uh, problem makers in our society, right? Terrorists, uh, terrorism is there, lot of people. Do you think that these people are not educated? They are highly educated. They know uh, the most advanced technology and, uh, and the, the, uh, the science. Then why they indulge in such filthy and, and dangerous uh, things? Because, because they have only the cognitive enhancement, but not the other thing. No ethical values is there. No attitude, uh, good attitude is there. No skill they have. Maybe they have some skills, but that skills are not for the betterment of the society. So that is why the, the, the harmonious blend of these three components is very much required for a uh, healthy growth of a student. So that is being addressed in the NEP. Okay, so can you imagine a person with a huge head? I always uh, I think such a cartoon, uh, huge head, his knowledge is too much. Whereas no attitude, no body is very small and no heart and very small heart and very small hands and uh, legs. And he can't move such a cartoon, you can imagine how uh, ugly that figure will be. So uh, in Malayalam, there is a story by, by Vaicham Muhammad Bashir called Vishwavichyada Mai uh, A person's nose started growing because long nose is a symbol of uh, beauty, right? So, uh, and he thought his nose was short, uh, short nose. He prayed for uh, his nose to grow. And it grew and grew, and it became uh, uh, unimaginably long, and he can't manage it. So the the not blended growth, if it if the growth is not a harmonious proportional growth, it will be definitely uh, a problem to society. So what is uh, envisaged in the NEP? It is not spelled out here, but what I am getting from this is the the holistic growth of a student is definitely assured in the new education policy. Okay. Uh, right. I think I'm running short of uh, time. Uh, I, will, I will, of course, faculty support, uh, sir, has uh, already pointed out uh, so many changes. These are the institutional, I told you, this is an institutional change. And the institutional change, there are three types of higher education institutions coming to picture uh, after this NDP is introduced. That is, uh, there is no longer, no more affiliated college. Please uh, remember that uh, by the immediate future, the affiliation, affiliated college system will be vanishing. And there are three types of uh, institutions coming in. One is uh, highly research intensive institution that will be concentrating more on research and uh, less in teaching. Second category is teaching intensity, intensive institution, teaching intensive, teaching intensive institution. That means in that institution, teaching is the main agenda, whereas research is not that much given importance. Okay. And the third one, that is where we are going to belong to, uh, autonomous degree granting colleges. Autonomous degree granting colleges. So no possibility of affiliated college, nowhere. And, uh, and the NEP proposes, I don't know whether it will happen or not, NEP proposes 
model multidisciplinary education and research university in every district. In every district, there will be a university and uh, mayor uh, in every district. Uh, that is what is uh, proposed in the NEP 2020. And in the governance, of course, uh, little changes are there, little uh, uh, changes uh, in modification proposed in the uh, good suggestions proposed in the NEP 2020. Yeah, now we come to very quickly come to the new additions and changes. What are the new additions? This is one major change, NRF, National Research Foundation. National Research Foundation, uh, it envisions the establishment of uh, the uh, research foundation, <coughs> sorry, from which we get research funding and the research activities will be monitored by one single uh, body, that is uh, NRF. Okay. Then is internationalization of education. That is another uh, change that we are expecting. Then standalone education, higher education institutions and professional institutions evolve into multidisciplinary institutions. Especially, okay. Then uh, there will be a fee cap. See that this is uh, applicable to us. A fee cap will be provided for private education institutions of higher learning. We, we cannot charge uh, any fees as for the as uh, the practice going on at the at, at present no no institution is allowed to charge uh, enormous fee there is a fee cap and uh, there is another change by now the present uh, hrd ministry uh, is redesignated as ministry of education earlier it was like that and it was changed but now it is again uh, going back to ministry of education okay then use of technology that we are using uh, profusely nowadays. Uh, so this is another uh, important change. Now there won't be any DST or uh, uh, NAC or ACT, UGC, nothing. These are the uh, things coming in. There, is, there will be an overarching umbrella body that is called the Higher Education Commission of India, HECI. Under that, there will be four verticals. For standard setting, there is General Education Council. For funding, Higher Education Grants Council. And for accreditation, there won't be any NAC accreditation. It will be well, another accreditation. And uh, that is coming under the HECI, or Higher Education Commission of India. Then uh, and regulatory body, National Higher Education Regulatory Council. So these are the four components coming under the, the overarching umbrella, uh, Higher Education Commission of India. Okay. Uh, coming to engineering education, uh, most of the things I think, uh, 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 I have to skip this. Okay. Now I am forced to conclude uh, with a, now I haven't gone through the challenges, even though it is not mentioned in the uh, policy document, while we study this policy document in detail, we can see a lot of uh, challenges uh, in front of us. Uh, of course, we have to thrive among, uh, amidst of all these challenges and finally come out uh, solving all these challenges, uh, right? And now I conclude uh, with a quote, education is the passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to those to prepare for it today. Absolutely. Therefore, uh, we should we should be prepared to embrace the uh, well-written, robust national education policy 2020. I think uh, I have given a little flavor of the uh, NEP 2020. It is to be discussed in days and days, in sessions and sessions. And uh, I hope that uh, by this time, ever since its introduction, uh, a huge number of, umpteen number of sessions have been conducted in this NEP itself. So all over the country. So this is a small effort from my side. And I hope that you have received, you have something to us take away and will help us to welcome the uh, changes, at least to be ready to welcome the changes. Thank you so much for your uh, 
and if there is any questions i can uh, answer those questions if at all there is any due to the paucity of time they make the questions very short yes sir yes, so this is an interactive time uh, the participants who wish to ask any questions can uh, post their questions either on the chat box or if you can raise your uh, hand using the zoom platform uh, we will unmute yourself and uh, uh, you can directly ask the question to sunny sir so now you can remove the screen share sir but uh, we have uh, received a few questions uh, sunny sir can i ask on behalf of them right yeah definitely definitely okay sir the first question which we received is uh, with this national education policy at which stage of a student life uh, he or she will get a clear insight on deciding uh, his or her future regarding how with the selection of its career and all maybe uh, maybe uh, after the foundational uh, class foundational stage he will be exposed to various uh, multidisciplinary things so from there the if, since it is very flexible from there he or she can get the correct uh, attitude his uh, ability his potential in which area his potential is there so from there the in from school itself he can he or she can find out the his or her taste i have a point to mention here yeah can you hear me yeah please definitely. yes sir please go ahead and um, more than the students in indian con uh, context the parents should be educated unfortunately parents spin their hopes right the boy that goes to fourth standard they decide uh, my son has to do medical this college and this branch and he'll do ms in orthopedics and everything is streamlined this less go for the student to understand i think it's high time i think professor made a very good in, in a very good point that uh, we bother about aptitude but we don't bother about attitude because aptitude and attitude determines the altitude of a person so we should know the what exactly the attitude of a boy early and try to find out so unfortunately you now we are all system is such a even if any becomes unless the parents come out of this and give a free hand to the students this becomes very difficult because i'll tell you one example is very quite relevant the question suppose a boy was is interested in going to mathematics science or physics in this context the neighbor will say oh that boy didn't get engineering so he's going for maths or science or chemistry the boy might be really interested in come physics but the, the 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 natural phenomena outside is a psycho the boy get depressed so uh, tell me one of the institute in india now i sir has come otherwise there are few institute which give science as a background uh, study for the students so i think there should be social change stigma has to change uh, to see that the boy uh, boy or the children should have a freedom to decide what they have to be otherwise they'll be pinned by the parents or the society this is a very good point where yeah. supplementing to that i think in usa as well as in europe that system also exist yes sir good thomas thank you sir uh, so we have received another question and the question is nap 2020 recommended development of national textbooks with local content and flavor what is your view about this statement it is very much uh, a healthy uh, approach you know if uh, the a local a locality may be blessed with a lot of heritage and lot of uh, 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 plus points and uh, since it is written in english or uh, some other foreign language he or she cannot be uh, knowing it but if those uh, textbooks are written in local language definitely that student can read it so that's an advantage so we are making giving a freedom from the typical english uh, uh, medium of english, uh, instruction but local language of course english medium is very much necessary if you go abroad and all it is very much required but it is not the only medium of instruction you can have various options as well in the digital era uh, the reading and writing habit has decreased now one of the observation yeah yeah uh, you see now the examination 40 pages uh, answer script nobody nobody uses hardly 10 pages students are using digitally so and i am very sure there will be in 10 years there will be a library without books 
completely digital. Yeah. So we have to prepare ourselves for that, students. I mean, that and now, a, yeah. Now and we have, have a lot of local, local language software correct, available. Correct. So definitely yes. it will be translated. It will be uh, collected in local language. Compared to writing a textbook and writing a digital uh, content, it will be easier. Yeah. Hello? Uh, Dr. Vendu Gobal has raised his hands. Please ask him. Uh, uh, good evening, sir. I am a Venu Kapal speaking from Hyderabad. Okay. This is related to national education policy. What is the stand of NAP on stand alone management institutions like All India Management Association as well as NIPM Calcutta and ISTD in New Delhi? Because the candidates qualified from these institutions, though recognized by AICT or UGC, are not getting their due consideration uh, in the admissions related to PhD programs and faculty positions. So what is the what is the reason for discrimination? Though all these programs are recognized and functioning as a national level, apex bodies in the field of management. But the qualified people are not able to getting suitable openings for faculty positions or to do personal research programs. What is the stand of NEP on this uh, national level professional apex bodies? Like I'm on New Delhi. Yeah. I understood your question, sir. Uh, the answer is uh, in, in NDP 2020, the strict boundaries between the disciplines, between the institutions, uh, and all these such things is now getting uh, fused. It is not, there is no more a strong, strict uh, boundaries between these things. See, in the 90s and the 80s, they will be allowed to take some, offer some courses in arts, some social science, humanities. Etc. Etc. So a multidisciplinary nature is going to come in, come into the institutions, no matter whether it is a higher IIT or IIM, whatever it is. That is what is envisaged in the NDP. Okay, so I thank think you. I, sir. Am I made clear? But a little bit of difference is also there, sir. Right now, for candidates qualified from the institutions, sir, are not permitted to pursue PhD programs in Andhra Pradesh as well as in Telangana. But we don't know the position in Kerala and all these things. Sir, that is true. That is true. But these are all special cases that are to be and uh, to be addressed. And NEP will okay. be treating the education as a continuum, and it will be coming under one single regulatory. So that single regulatory uh, will decide the promotion and the appointment, the career advancement, everything. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, another question which we have received is, uh, what exactly is the difference between a bachelor degree and multidisciplinary degree? That you have been mentioning in slide number yeah. 17. A bachelor degree uh, is, uh, if a student uh, uh, does his education uh, in college for three years, the four-year degree program is modular in nature. That is, if he completes one year, first year of his uh, course program, he will be getting a certificate, okay? And if, if he completes the first two years, he'll be getting a diploma. And if he completes three years of uh, study there in the same discipline program, then he'll be getting a usual degree, normal degree. Whereas, if that student has greater potential and, uh, and uh, like our major and minor, right, uh, in engineering context. See, if that student has higher potential and to take some multidisciplinary courses and he can do that and that degree program will be known as multidisciplinary degree the name of that degree is multidisciplinary degree and if a student has that degree he needs only one year for pg program Thank you, sir. that's a difference okay okay sir. thomas we can take one or two more questions uh, because of the time okay sure. uh, gobal sir there is another question for you from uh, the participant the question is, uh, in most institutions, the teaching faculty seems to be overloaded due to their additional duties like accreditation work and quality enhancement processes. So does this new NAP will reduce their burden? Uh, and let me tell you as a teacher, not as a director of the institute. See, uh, in teaching learning process, there's a called cake and icing. Cake is the teaching he has to do. A research consultancy, other uh, that's icing he has to do. So a teacher has to take the responsibility. 
and uh, it's inevitable you know uh, you don't no question of for getting overloaded it's always a pleasure in fact I, I, you know it's all the responsibility for example when professor asked i was in a village i drew all the way because there's no connectivity because there's no social commitment i think uh, teaching is that's why i told teaching is not a job it's a profession the person should know that teaching is not a job it's a profession we are not working for money or time we are working for a profession for satisfaction when you define that when we try train with they said that teaching is a profession everything will come to the uh, the standstill i think uh, the, the teachers not bother about i'm overloaded or underloaded we are we are gone through that but only the compressed air will work not the free air so a teacher is pressed he will get the best thank you sir thank you very much i hope you have clearly answered the question and uh, the final question uh, what are the qualifications needed for a faculty under the new nep 2020 any changes from the current criteria actually uh, i haven't mentioned that there is a bed program the teacher education program there with the four years of duration uh, teacher education program is there <coughs> blank for four years and uh, definitely uh, if at, if one has to be a teacher he has to get this uh, bed degree teacher education degree if all the questions are over i have one small one minute with the permission of the i want to mention yes sir please go ahead sir it's a pleasure uh, professor uh, mentioned a very good point in his presentation that we find a uh, brilliant students getting to as terrorist or getting bad in the society because generally in our institution uh, we will honor the person best outgoing student or best uh, alumni but we don't know we don't uh, felicitate felicitate our our student now there's a answer in the gurukula is very very relevant in, there was a teacher in gurukula he had nine just try to understand i'll take a minute is very relevant to this he had 10 students nine students are very good they are very on you know humble they are learning everything one boy was very mischievous he was troubling everybody he was not studying he was troubling everybody then all the nine of them together went to guru and said it's a gurukula system the old system sir we are fed up with this boy and uh, we can't study he here is troubling us and uh, if you do either you have to throw them out throw him out or all nine of us will go out. you know what the guru said in our conventional system you would have thrown him out you would have called his father and thrown him out horrible fellow get lost but you know what the guru will said all nine of you can go out, but i will not allow this boy to go out because all nine of you go out you are all good people you will not spoil the society whereas if i send this boy out he will be spoiling the society unless he becomes a good boy i will not send him to the society exactly the gurukul system is are you doing this no we all fin point by the boy why is doing it we say that as a teacher why the boy is doing we don't say why is doing it we say what he has done i think the teacher has to see because in my 36 years of life as a teacher i found that some boys in some state they will do mistake if you correct it they will do wonderfully well wonderfully well in life exactly the message to the teachers thank you sir your all examples are superb sir <laughs> thank you so much thank you very much uh, sir for your wonderful session uh, now we have come to the end of our webinar on an insight into national education policy nep 2020 organized by the iqac cell of embeds uh, let me invite dr soli george coordinator iqac embeds and uh, dean of planning and development embeds to propose the vote of thanks ma'am over to you Uh, okay. Please unmute. Doctor Soli, please unmute. Not at, not at. Uh, please make her co-host. She is not co-host. That's it. admin please make her co-host that's why okay, she can okay. yeah yeah now it is fine we can do that teacher please go ahead good evening one and all most respected chief guest and director nit goa professor gobal magareya panel lead of the webinar and principal of embits dr p sojanlal keynote speaker and the dean and chief administrator of embits dr sunny kuriakos joint coordinator of this webinar mr samyang marcos 
all other IQAC members and uh, deans, faculty members of MBITS and other dignitaries which I could find from the participants list and all other dear participants. Today, we had a very good session on the most relevant area which we should work together in education. And for that, we have the National Education Policy 2020. The National Education Policy 2020, as Har was mentioned, which was approved by the Union Cabinet of India on 29th July 2020, which outlines the vision of India's new education system. The new policy replaces the previous national policy on national education by 1986. And the key, key principles of this NEP, I understood, the respect for diversity and local context, and uh, the equity and inclusion, the uplifting of community participation, use of technology in teaching and learning, the emphasis on conceptual understanding, then recognizing the unique capabilities and tapping from each of the each of the students, then critical thinking and creativity, and it, it should be boosted for logical decision, then the continuous review. Without any delay, let me move on to the du uh, duty entrusted to me. Our chief guest, Professor Gobal Mugereya, the director of NIT Goa, during his, actually from his uh, uh, description about him, we could understand many things. And uh, he worked uh, as the director of, initially he was there in NIT Suratkal and uh, was the director in Nagartala and presently in Goa. As his, as the director in uh, Agartala, I could find from his, from the details about him, he, he did many things for the reformation of the academics, like uh, from the institute, he sent many uh, faculty uh, abroad for research interactions, and he brought many students' placement, uh, student placement by his work could bring it to 100%, nearly 100%, and uh, he could improve the student intake. And uh, I think that institute became the highest in North uh, Eastern states. And also presently he is doing a lot many things in IIT, sorry, NIT Goa itself. And he was mentioning about the diploma institutions, to bring, how to bring the diploma institutions to higher levels. And uh, for all points as Sajan Sar was mentioning, all the courtings are excellent, sir. That will remain in our uh, mind. Like uh, uh, that uh, banana tree, coconut tree, and the uh, last uh, example, everything will remain in our mind, sir. And uh, the comparisons like the center of excellence and center of relevance, then the core confidence, the interdisciplinary confidence, faculty center to student centric, all the, uh, all the changes from initial policy to the new policy, and uh, you brought about the involvement of foreign university. Many in many points you highlighted. Thank you very much for your uh, valuable suggestions to the uh, education system. And uh, actually, you brought an insight to this national education policy, sir. Even in your busy schedule as the director, you accepted our invitation, and you could find time to spend some time with the uh, with us in this webinar thank you so much sir for your presence it is very valuable for us thank you very much sir then next we have even in his then we have the keynote speaker dr sunny kuriakos he is a person who can give series of lectures from different areas because that shows his dedication to things. Today, he could give a wonderful uh, session on NEP, explaining from school level to higher education. He mentioned about the four, par uh, four parts of the national education policy, and he touched the main focus on the uh, educational level and the higher education level. He was mentioning about many points, like uh, in part one, uh, explained about the school education and the major reforms we should have the multidisciplinary education, the flexibility of the subjects, then the in UG programs about about the UG program, uh, PG program. Clearly, he was explaining 
then about the credit transfer academic bank of credits research and innovation he touched almost all the points in part 1 and part 2 i'm also i'm happy that you are here in embids to give more and more sessions that i take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude as the coordinator of the webinar for accepting our request as the keynote speaker also on behalf of all the participants i express our sincere thanks for the wonderful sessions and discussions we had thank you sir our principal dr p sojan lal is always there as a pillar and support for all the activities of embits for this webinar also he extended his wholehearted support sir as the coordinator i express my sincere thanks the joint coordinator of the webinar as well as the uh, iqac joint coordinator mrs saumya marcos is always with me to do all things related to iqac and uh, i take this opportunity to thank all other iqac members for all the efforts they have taken thomas is also an icic member in the back also so many iqac iqac members are there i take this opportunity to thank all the iqac members for this webinar then saumya i take this occasion to express my sincere gratitude for everything that you did for the webinar the support by the system administrator mr eldor should be mentioned with a special emphasis with that without any hesitation he is doing everything for the webinar not only for this webinar for all the webinars which is being conducted in the uh, embits mr eldos is a part our sincere thanks to mr eldos also our gratitude to all the, to the deans hods and all other staff members who are always with us for the conduct of the webinar finally without participants the webinar wouldn't be a success today we have almost 335 constantly throughout the webinar that number was maintained as the participants from various levels i could find many dignitaries from the participants list so thank you all for the participants who are attending the webinar finally i want to thank mr nirmal das uh, uh, from computer science our student who prepared the brochure certificates of the webinar etc so he voluntarily to, uh, uh, agreed to uh, prepare these things i take no we have uh, lost her connection i think uh, so So once again, thank you, dear participants, uh, for uh, finding out time in uh, joining this webinar. We will be coming with more webinars in the upcoming time. Uh, once again, also, thank you, dear. Thomas. Uh, uh, in response to uh, Dr. Gob Gobal Mugria's uh, uh, proposal to have a center of relevance, I I may come up with uh, more models, and I would may say that uh, shortly we may come up with a new course on 5G technologies. And there will be three phases which I am thinking of: phase one, phase two, and phase three. once somebody has uh, passed the phase 3 he will be qualified and immediately uh, will be able to join with an industry that is what i am foreseeing now and uh, once uh, we have streamlined this uh, i will also inform uh, all iits and nids and i expect that the level of uh, students admitted to this is much competency level of uh, iits and nids and to that level we are thinking of that and uh, more details i will announce later once it is formalized and sir that is a real take away i expect that the center of relevance and other details also once again thank you all of you thank, thank you thank you principal and before i leave uh, come to go and be our guest any time and also uh, this a uh, suggestion for you take care of your principal take care of your faculty faculty will take care of the institution yes sir we will do that. there's a team sir and thank you so much sir thank you thank you very much bye bye thank you so participants please note if you haven't filled the uh, uh, feedback form kindly do it for getting the participation certificates once again thank you very much thank you everyone thank you sir for accepting us and giving us an opportunity to be part of it thank you very much i